So what we are doing now is we're applying the defibrillator pads, the external defibrillator, also known as R2 pads. Uh, we're going to have to make some compromises here based on the location of the sub-Q system. So we can't go with the traditional AP configuration. So they are going to modify the placement of these pads so that the shock vector is still effective and yet stays out of the prep field for the SICD. All right, so what we're doing is we're just starting to get an idea of where we want this uh, device to go and the leads. Um, I always got to start, everybody is very different uh, in terms of their uh, body habitus here. Um, our patient here obviously is a young fellow with a lot of musculature, so we're going to make sure we're going to do as clean a job as we can and give a good cosmetic result as well as a good functional result. A couple of landmarks I start with, the uh, suprasternal notch here. The xiphoid process is about right here, so I'm getting a general idea of that. We have determined from the uh, ECG screening that the best place for this electrode to exist is just to the left of his sternum, maybe one centimeter away from, up from the midline. So I'm going to get an idea about that. And then the costal margin comes down over here. Usually this lead sort of comes straight down here, makes a little curve, and then comes over here where it enters the device on the side. We try to make that about as straight across as we can. And then over here is where we're going to have the ICD. And I'm going to bring in the II in a little while so we can get an idea of uh, where this ICD placed on the outside of the skin is going to show itself to be relative to the heart because there's a couple of landmarks that we're going to want to see. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. So we've got our electrode in a position that sort of approximates uh, what it's going to be once it's implanted. Um, this is the, these are the vectors that this electrode and this device are going to use for the sensing purposes and the shocking purposes. And they also approximate what we did during the ECD screening process. Um, again, this is the midline of the sternum. I'm maybe a little bit more than a centimeter over. I think this is going to be a good position for the uh, electrode for sensing and shocking but I like to use a little bit of fluoroscopy just to make sure that I'm overlying the anterior aspect of the heart and we know the right ventricles and anterior structure. So I really want to make sure that this overlies that. So um, we've got it taped into position. I think it's a good starting position. And we're going to take a fluoro image and see what we're working with, see if we need any adjustments. Once it's in place, I'll mark it. All right, so let me just, I'm just going to move this uh, table a little bit to give you a full idea of what we're dealing with. So a little higher here coming down. You see the diaphragm there, you get an idea where the heart ends, and now we're going to go over here. You see the lateral aspect. So let's move it back up here a little bit more. So as I look at this, this is not bad, but I would say if anything, maybe I've got the lead a little bit more towards the suprasternal notch than I need it to be. So not bad in terms of distance from the sternum. So let me just manipulate this just a little bit. So a little time spent here actually I think goes a long way towards uh, making sure the device functions the way you want it to function. So let's take another look, get the II down here. I think that's going to be pretty good. So let me go ahead and mark this off really quick with this uh, pen, get an idea of where we are. So I'll put a, right, a little mark here, kind of an X, that's the distal limit of that electrode. And I actually kind of make little marks here where the electrode is going to run. My incisions are going to be about right there as well, so I'll just get an idea where my incisions are going to be. My incision is going to overlie that distal tip, and then my incision is going to be a little bit, here's a proximal electrode, and I don't want my incision necessarily right over the electrode. I want that electrode in a good solid position for sensing. I tend to make my incision a little bit down here where you see this tying sleeve uh, approximated here. So uh, my incision is going to be a little bit lower than this particular uh, set of double lines here, and maybe I'll just make a mark about right here will be the center of that lower incision. So I think electrode is good. Now it's time to look at the can. And we're going to use tape as well on that. And here I'm just getting an idea. You can begin again, look at your, here's your sternal notch here. Here's the costal margin. Um, the lead coming straight over here. It approximates sort of like where the, where the xiphoid, excuse me, is. 
and um, I think we can begin looking at this. Then we can make ma little manipulations to the can to see if it's where we want it to be. So let's put tape over here, John, if you don't mind. What are we looking for in terms of the position of the generator? Well, you know, you, you want to envelop the heart. You want to make sure you get the mass of the left ventricle so that it is between the can and this electrode. Um, it may not necessarily be a direct uh, line of shock uh, uh, or a direct vector. The vector may follow the columns of blood in the chambers and between the valves, as, as some have said. So let's, and see, let's see how this envelops the heart to start with. We'll take an AP image, and then we're gonna also going to uh, a left lateral image. So here we go. You see the can starting to come to the picture right there. Let's get a cine of it so you can see. All right. Diaphragm here. You see the border of the heart coming down here. So my opinion is I've got the can probably a little bit too low. I need to go maybe up that way a little bit. But while I've got it here, I'm also going to look at it in a left lateral. I got about 35 LAO. That gives us an idea of what we're going to be working with. All right, again, I think my can is a little bit low. Give you an idea. All right. So let's make some adjustments and see if we can get a get better position. And I think this can also needs to be a bit more posterior. So let's try it here. All right. Let's see what we look like. There's the can there. I think it's a bit better there. This is where the heart ends down here. This gives you a cine for that. I think it's a, the floor of the heart, so the diaphragmatic aspect of the heart down here coming around. And now let's see if we've kind of got the heart enveloped a bit here. So we're going to go to our LAO position. So I think that's going to be a decent shock vector. Anything, I think I, my can can go a little bit further up, closer to his axilla. I don't want to actually be in the axilla, but I think I can go a little bit closer there, and we should be good. There's the can. I'm going to come back over there. All right. All right, I think that's, I think it's going to be good for us. And let me just put some marks here where I think this can's going to go. I kind of just trace around the can a bit with my marker, get around that corner. It'll be easy to get the idea of where this is. And again, you can manipulate it even in the pocket after we're done, but I just want to get a good idea of where we are so we can locate a good incision. Um, we'll, we'll get to the next uh, part where we decide where to make incision, but incisions can be kind of uh, just sort of a, a diagonal like that or sometimes right over the can. I think it depends on what you think the difficulty of accessing that pocket's going to be. All right, so I think we're done with that. And you may not have to use fluoroscopy for these things as time goes by. I think we're just cautious because uh, the experience is still pretty new uh, uh, for us uh, doing these devices, but I've been very happy with the results, and I think a little bit of time spent with fluoroscopy now actually takes you a long way. It will do just a tad more during the case, but overall, it's probably not going to be more than about 30 to 60 seconds at the most. Okay, well, let's, let's go ahead and get them ready to go.
so we've uh, finished the prep, and I, uh, it's a nice wide prep because we really have about three operative sites we have to work on here. The pocket down here, the top of the pocket would be about where my index finger is. This is this inferior incision just above the xiphoid. And this is the one just here by the suprasternal notch. So we need access to all those areas. And one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to really encroach too closely because you need to work with this. You may have to adjust this lead position a little bit.